If you don't know where it's at, go to Matthew and turn left. Malachi is the last book in the so-called Old Testament, yet, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament also because the law is still in effect. All right, in Malachi, look with me in Malachi chapter 1. Malachi is the, it is the burden of the Word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Um, you understand, if you want to believe the Bible, believe what it says. Verse 1, the burden of the Word of the Lord to who? Israel by Malachi. All your prophets are to Israel. It says so, but people take them out of the context. Now, what I want to learn in here is about uh, how to honor the Father. And we're going to look at this. Uh, look at verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob? And Jacob is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. What's Jacob's name? Israel. Okay. He said, I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And the reason he hated Esau, Esau sold his birthright for food. Okay? you uh, Just to learn something from this, I want you to turn with me to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and Romans... Chapter 16. I want to learn something about the birthright selling that Esau. Uh, Jacob and Esau, neither one of them were any good. There's no good in the Bible. There's none good except the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, don't call me good. There's only one good. That's my Father which is in heaven. And in accordance with the Scriptures, in Romans 16, now, remember, Esau and Jacob. Why would God choose Esau, uh, Jacob over Esau? Because they're both no good. Uh, hey, Jacob, was a, he was a scoundrel. But, I mean, he, he knew how to do some things. Yet God loved him, just like David. David's a murderer, an adulterer, a liar, a thief. And yet God said he's a man after my own heart because he would do the will of God. The will of God will come through Jacob, Esau, I mean, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob being Israel. The will of God is going to come through him, the twelve tribes of Israel. But now watch in Matthew, uh, Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own what? Then they would sell their right, their right to God for what? Their belly. Okay, that's why most preachers you know are very rich. They're very well off. They go to bigger churches when they leave the littler churches. They always go big, up, big, big, big to make more money. And the money is involved in their belly, obviously. And it says, And by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Go to 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. In 1 Timothy 6, 3. And folks, size means nothing to God. Israel was the smallest people in the world, and He chose them. And He said, you have no right to brag. You are nothing. You're, not, you're the smallest people. I chose you because of the reason. All right? 1 Timothy 6, 3, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth. Now here it is. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. The people that think because it's big, because it has a lot of, uh, a lot of people, a lot of money involved, think that's godly. What did he tell Timothy to teach faithful men to do? I didn't hear that. What did he tell him to do? Withdraw thyself from it. Okay? Why? Go back to Malachi. In Malachi, and he brings up Esau because Esau sold his birthright 
for food. Okay? By the way, there's one other passage I do want you to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 with this. Malachi 1 and 1 Corinthians 9. All right, 1 Corinthians 9, and this is one of the first verses I saw many, many years ago in preaching the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9, 14. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach, what? The gospel, what? Okay, the gospel. And what should they do? Live, give me the words, of the gospel. Okay. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, to understand something, who wrote the Corinthian letter? So I've got 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Now, who do you say wrote it? First verse in each one of the books begins Paul or I, Paul, whatever, right? Paul and Apostle. But just to make clarity, you just have to back up two chapters. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 1, what's the first word? Paul. If I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you don't have to say in 2 Corinthians, but I'll read it to you. Paul. So who's the writer? Okay. Paul. Now, it's very important. Peter did not write this. Paul wrote it. Okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Okay. What is our who would that include? The Corinthians and Paul, right? Okay. If you walk up to somebody on the street and you say, what is the gospel that Paul preached? See what your answer is. Try it. He said, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, right? Right? Now, let's learn some things about Paul's gospel. Turn to, um, well, read verse 4. In whom the God's world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Turn with me to Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, the first letter that was put in the canon of Scripture written by Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote 13 letters. Thirteen of them, and they're Romans through Philemon. Okay? On the other side of Paul's writings is the book of Acts. On the other side of Paul's writings this way is the book of Hebrews. Acts is about the Acts of the Apostles. Hebrews is about the Hebrew believers. It has nothing to do with it. Thirteen letters, Romans through Philemon, written to and about who? Now, who was the prophets written to? Israel. So i got 13 letters in that Bible that are written to you, directly to you. The rest of it's written for your learning. But 13 letters written directly to the Gentiles by this man called Paul. All right, let's see if Paul has something outstanding. Look in Romans chapter 2, verse 16. Paul said, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to... My gospel, okay? Then in absolutely reading it, looking at it, does he said my gospel? Let's see if it's a fluke. Turn to Romans 16. Now remember, he said, if our gospel be hid, hid to them that are lost. If you couldn't go to Paul's gospel, if you didn't know Paul's gospel, where would you be? I didn't hear that. What would you be? Okay. Romans 16, 25. 
Now to Him that is of power to establish you according to what? My gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Does it say my gospel? Okay, so I've got it in Romans 2, 16, Romans 16, 25, turn to 2 Timothy, written to Timothy, who is to teach faithful men that they may be able to teach others also, and only a faithful man would know the gospel. Correct? All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to what? Is that what it says? So I got three distinct chapters, of verses, chapters, that without a shadow of a doubt, without me making it up, says that Paul has a gospel, right? Okay. Now, turn with me to... Uh, Romans chapter 1. And look in verse 13. He said, Now I would not have you ignorant. That is one of Paul's famous statements. He doesn't want a Gentile ignorant. The problem with Gentiles, we're ignorant to God. Why? If you go to... Uh, Acts and back up, go to the Old Testament, so called. All of that's about Israel. Folks, you can't pray the prayer of Jabez. You can't go in the Old Testament and claim it. Why? We're Gentiles. We're the heathen. We're the enemies of Israel. We're the ones that God told Israel not to marry, not to associate with, not to take our idols up. So, we got a problem. If we can't go in the Old Testament, and get our doctrine, we got to go somewhere to get doctrine. Amen or not? Now, I want you to read Romans 2. Remind me, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 in just a second. All right, Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other what? Is there any doubt who it's written to? Okay. Verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both the wise and the unwise. The Greeks were wise, the barbarians were unwise, okay? So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. All right, in Rome, there are Gentiles. Jews have been told to leave uh, Rome. Claudius Caesar told the Jews to get out. But he wants to preach to the Romans. Now watch this, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of what? Okay, I'm going to put down here, gospel of Christ. Everybody says gospel is good news. All right, the good news of Christ, the gospel of Christ. Now watch this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, what's it? This is the it. For it is the power of God unto what? To everyone that, to the Jew first and also who? Okay. The Greeks, the Jews, remnant elect according to grace, what's the power of God unto them? If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Okay, Second Corinthians chapter four, uh, three. Now understand, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament. Say what it says in my book or New Testament. It's Old Testament because they're still under the law. Jesus, a man approached him. He said, "Good master, what must I do to have eternal life?" He said, "Why callest thou me good? There's none good but my Father which is in heaven." And he said, "Well, what should I do?" And he said, "If thou keep the commandments." then the commandments are still in effect in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the only the testator that gives his life, sheds his blood, makes a new covenant, a new testament. And according to the book of Hebrews, the new testament, the new covenant is to Israel. First, last, and always. All you got to do is read the book of Hebrews. It's right there. Okay? But 
Paul says, but now the righteous God without the law. Without the law. Okay, now watch. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. There was a time when Moses went up on the mountain. And as he went up there, he's going to be given something. He's going to be given the law. Who's down at the bottom of the mountain? Israel. For God delivered them out. The Exodus. They were delivered out of Egypt. Okay? All your books mean something, folks. The titles to them and all. All right? So when Moses went up, verse 13, and not as Moses would put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. What was he carrying? The Ten Commandments. What's the last words in the verse? Boy, you guys asleep? Second Corinthians 3. 3. Oh, I apologize. 3. 13. That's the last words. What was he carrying? Well, then what was the bonus later? Why? Nobody kept them. Folks, well, you ain't never kept the Ten Commandments. You don't love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you don't love your neighbor as yourself. You love yourself more than your neighbor. And you got a telephone, and you do idle gossip. You're covetous. You want what your neighbor has. You have never kept the commandments. There's only one that ever did. If he kept it and fulfilled it, how do you plan on getting above him? Now watch. Verse 15, but even on this day when Moses is read, what's in the Mosaic writings? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He wrote those five books. Leviticus, what's written in Leviticus? The laws. Exodus, Deuteronomy, what's in those, the Ten Commandments? Are you with me? The Leviticus book is about priesthood, and the priesthood serviced the law. So when it's read, when Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, when Moses is read, what is happening? The veil is upon what? Their heart. Nevertheless, when it, that's the heart, shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty from what? The law. People have Ten Commandments in your yard. They just put a condemning factor in front of them. Folks, the law won't save you. No one kept the law but Jesus. And people that are trying to keep the law and trying to pronounce to God what they've done have missed what the gospel of Christ is about. And that's what we want to see. All right? Now watch. Look with me in uh, uh, Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 3, verse 19, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Gentiles were never under the law. It was given to Israel. Say, so how do you know that, Brother Jerry? Okay, let's just read it. Romans 9. It wouldn't do me a bit of good and you any good if I make up what I say. I'm going to read it to you and you can take with whatever you believe. In Romans chapter 9, verse... Uh, 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and what? Folks, you couldn't miss that if you weren't trying. Who was given the law? Israelites. And the service of God and the promises. Okay? Then go back to Romans 3 and watch. And also, uh, just for fun, Romans 2 first. Let's see. Let you see what it says. You know, I love that the Bible's true. 
And every one of us in here are liars. Now watch. In Romans 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the who? Read the next five, four or five words. Which have not the law. Did we make that up? What do the Gentiles not have? Okay, now watch. Turn to Romans 4. Verse 13. What I want to establish is that Paul's gospel is based on faith. Not works. Okay? There ain't a work you can do that will establish you with God. Now watch. Everything you've ever done religiously is done. And that's what Paul said. Paul said everything he did religiously, he counted it but dung. And you know what dung was in the Bible? They took the dung of the animals, the offering animal, they took it outside the camp and burned it as a sin offering. And now when I say for a sin offering, because of sin. Dung, dead flesh. That's what God thinks of religion. And you try to tell that to people and they get madder and fire at you. Now watch. In Romans chapter 4, verse three, uh, 13. For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made in effect, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no... Okay, if there was no law, what would they not be? What does the verse say? There would be no transgression. Okay? Next verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be what? By grace. Okay? Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Well, to get to understand who this book is written to, go to Ephesians 3.1. Ephesians 3.1. For this cause I, Paul the prisoner, this is his prison imprisonment letters, they call them prison epistles, of Jesus Christ for you who? So who's the letter written to? Gentiles. Okay, go back to chapter 2 and look at verse 8. For... By grace are you. Who's you? Gentiles. For by grace are you saved. How? Through faith. Okay? So we've got the word through. Okay? Now through would represent that it happened. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves it is... The gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Correct? All right. What's the message of Paul to the Gentiles? For by grace, then it is no more of the law. It's no law. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, there's nothing you ever did to get saved. Come on. Well, by grace you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. Why? It's, what is it that most people believe saves them? Walk in the aisle, asking Jesus in heart, turning from their sins, confessing their sins, giving their life to Christ. That's every one of them your works. And he said it's not a work. Oh my gosh, you'd have to come in the presence of somebody that actually believed Paul's letter and would present the gospel to you. For what's the power of God unto salvation? 
the gospel of of Christ. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, that we should be the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. All right? There's something in the Bible that we have to trust. Now, if we trust in our own works, that's been eliminated. If we trust in the law or keeping the law, that's been eliminated. If we trust in our ability to keep from sinning, that's been eliminated. So what are we going to trust in? Okay, let's read on. Verse 13, In whom you also, who is the you written to the Ephesians? Who are they? You're a Gentile. Put yourself in the birds. In whom you also... Is there a moment, a time in your life when you trusted something that you didn't do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hound on this. Is there a moment in your life when you gave up, quit trying to get saved, quit trying to save yourself, and trusted someone that saved you? If you ever do, you'll have peace. Now watch. In whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And folks, you can't hear the good news of your salvation unless it's already accomplished. Now watch. In whom also after you believed, you were sealed. Now, that's the great part of Paul's gospel is S-E-A-L-E-D. That means you can never lose it. Amen. And most people are a little bit afraid they'll commit the unpardonable sin or commit blasphemy. Then it ain't by grace. Now, let's look. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. All right? Now let's think about this. I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 2. Now most of your life, if you went to church, I went to church when I was a young boy, who did you believe was the real apostle? I bet you thought it was Peter, didn't you? Okay? For he was given the keys to the kingdom. He was the man that walked with Jesus. All right? Now, let's think about something. Peter is the man that preaches at Pentecost in Israel feast day. No Gentiles allowed. No uncircumcised person allowed there. That's 50 days after the Passover. Why? The Passover, you're not allowed. Gentiles are not allowed to Passover. Folks, you know, don't be hoodwinked. And don't be ignorant. You have a King James Bible. If you do, if you don't get one and read it, and for the first time in your life say, Oh my God, that's what it says. That'll be the key to your knowledge, folks. Don't try to make it say what you've been doing all your life. Let it say what it says because this is the authority. Let God be true and every man a liar. Every one of us in here are liars. God is not a liar. And sit down and begin to read and you might find out that what you didn't do or what you thought you should do wasn't what God said to do. Now watch. Peter as at Pentecost, a Jewish day, and he preaches to the Jews that they need to repent because they killed their Messiah. And he's not repent of your sins. What did they do? They killed Christ. There are four five verses that says they did. And in killing Christ, they denied their Messiah and they lost their kingdom. And in doing so, God's Son said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And God let Peter preach to Israel a repentant message to where they could be associated with Jesus Christ in resurrection. And 
That's what Peter preached. And we'll look at that in just a minute. And we're going to ask you to do something. We're going to ask you to listen. Now watch. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 1, Then fourteen years after I went up again with, uh, to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel. Them. I wonder who that is. Well, it's Peter, James, and John. Now, this is just strange. The man Peter has the keys to the kingdom. The man Peter can walk on water. The man Peter can heal or de- uh, cleanse the lepers and heal or raise the dead and uh, whatever he does. I mean, he's got all kinds of power. Matthew chapter 10. Yet this man doesn't know the gospel that Paul preached. And everybody I hear on radio and TV acts like Peter knew it. And he don't. The book says he didn't. Now watch. Verse 2 again. I went up by revelation and communicated. That's telling. That's communication. That's talking. What we're doing now. Unto them that gospel which I preach among who? Then the Gentiles must have a different gospel than Peter. Yes or no? Okay. Let's see. In verse 7, But contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of what? Was committed to who? To who? Paul. So his gospel is the gospel of the uncircumcision, which is Gentiles. Remember, covenants have circumcision in it. The law has circumcision in it. We weren't under that. We don't have those. Okay? The gospel of circumcision. All right? I'm going to take verse 7. Everybody do, do this. Shake it off. I want you. Now loosen your hands up. Okay? You ready? Every time I read the word gospel, I want you to raise your hand and leave it up. Fair? Yeah, here's the instruction. Every time I read the word gospel, I want you to raise your hand and leave it up. Okay? Okay, here we go. Verse 7. Contrast, when they saw that the gospel, leave it up, the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. How many arms you got up? Count them. How many gospels? If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them or lost. Now let's see what Peter's gospel was. Acts 2. People say, that's pretty simple, Brother Jerry. Well, it better be or you won't get it. In Acts chapter 2, wouldn't it be a terrible thing to be hoodwinked all your life to believe that you had to do certain things or act a certain way or be a certain thing to please God and God had nothing to say about that? He knowed you from your birth before the foundation of the world, knew you were a sinner and that you wouldn't quit sinning. But he also knew that Jesus Christ would come in this world and live and absolutely tempted in all points like as we are yet knew no sin, live it for us and die for us and rise for us. And God forgave us. Now watch, Acts chapter 2, look at verse 22. You men of Israel, who is Peter talking to? 36, therefore let all the house of what? Who's Peter talking to? Okay. Let all the house of Israel know sure that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. What did the house of Israel do? Okay. What's the offering for killing Messiah in the law? There is none. There is nothing. And so basically they're doomed Unless Jesus said, Father, forgive them, Israel, they know not what they do, and gave them a chance to hear the good news of the circumcision. Are you with me? The gospel of the circumcision was committed to who? Peter. The good news to the circumcision. Let's see what it is. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and sent unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They knew what to do for sin. 
There's a law of abiding Jews at Pentecost. All males had to appear three times a year at Jerusalem. They knew what to do under the law. Boom! Now they don't know what to do under the law. And all that's decent, if God didn't have a plan for us, what should He have done to Israel? Wiped them off the face of the earth. Are you with me? But He didn't. In His mercy, He gave them a chance to repent. Repent of what? What did they not believe? It wasn't the law. They believed the law. What did they not believe? that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And he now has 12 men before them, the 12 apostles, who are speaking with other tongues, a sign to the Jews. Jews require a sign. Tongues are for a sign. And are proving to them that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. And so he said, You have crucified him, but God raised him from the dead. And they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And he says in verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Who's them? Israel. Repent, change your mind, believe He is the Son of God by resurrection, and be what? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for what? The remission of sins, not forgiveness. For the remission of sins, and you should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, sounds like good news to the circumcision. If they'll just repent, if they'll believe by these witnesses that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, why? These twelve spent 40 days with the resurrected Jesus Christ. They know He's raised from the dead. They know He's the Son of God. If these Israelites right here, right in front of Peter, will repent and change their mind and believe He's the Son of God and get baptized, what will they receive? Remission of sins and the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what they get and that's what Peter preached. How good is that going to do you? You didn't kill the Messiah. You didn't have any part of it. Come on, folks. Now watch. What have you done in your life? You've sinned. And you know what the problem is? You can't quit. And if you were a able to quit, you're still going to die because of your nature sin. Right? Let's get Paul's message. 1 Corinthians 15. I hope I'm making sense. I know it's simple. Folks, you need to grasp a hold of it. Maybe somebody in here needs it. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Paul writes to the Corinthians. Now, did he say if our gospel be hid? To the Corinthians. Okay? Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, unto the Gentiles. What did he have to reveal to Peter? His gospel which he preached among the Gentiles. Peter didn't know this gospel. Oh, my God. You know, I, 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 I turn on TV really and act like Peter knew it. He don't know it. Now watch. Which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and where you stand, by which also you are. Whatever Paul's got to say will save you, folks. Verse 2. By which also you're saved, if you keep remembering what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Hold your finger there just a second. I want you to turn with me over to 1 Timothy. Chapter 1. I'm going to get two passages. Somebody remind me in Acts 13. Just a second. All right. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, uh, 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to what? Who's the writer? Verse 1. Who's it to? Verse 2. Who's Timothy? He's an evangelist and a teacher. All right. Now watch. Verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for He counted me faithful putting me in the ministry, who was before a what? And a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord is exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And this is one of the most religious men in the Bible. He is a Pharisee, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, has taken a rational law blameless. This man said, Everything I did, I count them. Now watch. That's a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first, who's the first one saved by grace? How come I don't hear that on radio or TV? The Apostle Paul is the first one saved by grace. And if he's saved by grace, then he knows it's no more works. And if he's saved by grace, he knows it's no more of the law, but it's of faith. But we read those verses. All right. Show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. What did I tell you the verse I wanted you to turn to? Acts 13. Hold on to 1 Corinthians 15 because I'll shut up on that one probably. Acts 13. They call this a separation chapter. I do. It's where the Lord separated Saul of Tarsus. And we know him as the Apostle Paul. How do I know? Verse 1. Acts 13.1. Now there were at the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, which is Saul's brother-in-law, Simon, that's called Niagara, Lucius of Cyrene, Manion, which had been brought up with Herod to teach rock, and who? Say it out loud. Saul. Verse 9. Then who? Who is also called? Filled with? What is Paul filled with? Then I bet you he knows what he's talking about. Okay? Let's see what it says. Verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God to use the word of this salvation sent. Let's see what this salvation means. Verse 38, Be it known unto you therefore, and before I read, how many of you in your life was taught that you better quit doing that or God will get you? Okay? Well, then there wouldn't be nobody left. Say, so you better quit sinning. There wouldn't be nobody left. Say, well, I don't sin no more. Do you confess sin? Well, yes. What kind of theory is that? I don't sin, but I'm confessing them? Now, wait a minute. Watch. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you. What? The forgiveness of sins, not remission. Now, watch. Is there something in the back of your mind thinking there might be a law of God that he might not forgive you of? or might not justify you of it. Let's see. 39. And by Him, that's by the Lord Jesus Christ, all that believe are justified from how much? Which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. How much? How much? Then the law has no hold on you. The law can't condemn you nowhere, no how. The Ten Commandments have no rule over you. It's by grace you're saved. God would not take and bring you up there and all of a sudden throw the law on you and judge you. He judges righteously. And you know how He judged? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hold on to 1 Corinthians 15. 2 Corinthians 5. See, I lied. Let God be true in every man alive. 2 Corinthians 5. Look with me in verse 21. He said, For he, that would be God, hath made him, that would be the Lord Jesus Christ, to be what? He did not say sins. How did he make him to be sins? How did he make him? Why would he make him to be sin? What's the wages of sin? Did Jesus ever sin? Did he have an earthly father? Did he have the blood of sin in him? Did he ever taint it by sinning? Was he tempted at all points like as we are yet knew no sin? Okay? So God took a man that is without sin, that loved him with all his heart, mind, and soul and strength, fulfilled all the law, 
and made him you. And when he did, he hung him on the cross. And you know what he did on the cross? Let's see. Now watch, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew sin, <clears throat> that we might be made the righteous of God in him. 1 Corinthians 15. This is Paul's gospel. Somebody said, well, I knew this. No, you didn't if you doubted it. I bet you can find your car outside, but I bet you couldn't take and find the gospel. Now watch. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Oh my God. Here's Saul of Tarsus named Paul. He's on the road to Damascus and the Lord appears to him brighter than the noonday sun and blinds him. He goes away for three days and Ananias comes in there and lays hands on him. He gets baptized and he gets filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he goes away for three years and it appears that the gospel is presented to him by the Scriptures. And you know what he does with it? He preaches it to who? To who? Gentiles. For he is the apostle of the Gentiles. He magnified his office. And preaching it to the Gentiles, Peter don't know it. And so the Lord says, It's time go up there to Jerusalem and show Peter and them the gospel that you preach to the Gentiles. And if you shake hands, you're making a binding. Whatever Peter could bind on earth was bound on earth. Whatever he bound in heaven was bound in heaven. And when he shook hands with Peter, he said, You go to the Gentiles and we'll continue with the circumcision. Hello. Then if I go 13 letters of Paul, who's he going to? You were born a Gentile. You come in the world a Gentile and you are not under the law and you've been put under the law. You were not under condemnation, but you were put under condemnation. You were not at peace with God and yet you had peace with God if you wanted it. Because Paul's gospel is the gospel of peace. Now watch. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. No repentance. No walking. What did he do already? What did he die for? Then you ain't got any. You're dead. Why? God took you. You're a Gentile. And he put you on the cross. And he gave you Christ's righteousness. As a gift. How that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to Scripture. Not one word of that's the same as Peter's. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Somebody died for our sins. It's not a matter of whether we confess our sins daily. He died for our sins. And dying for our sins, God let Him go down into hell. Three days in hell. It's amazing. The Easter lie. Jesus Christ was killed on Wednesday. Rose again the first day of the week before at night. You can't count it any other way, folks. And yet they claim this and they claim that. Why don't you look in your book and find out? It won't work. And so Jesus Christ, He said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And He became Jerry Sanders. And he died for my sins. And he took me in him and went down. And he endured the torment of hell with his soul for three days. Acts 2, Acts 2 says so clearly. And after that, God forgave Jerry Sanders and raised his son. And I was forgiven. Beat that with a stick. If you want it, it's yours. It's called the gift of God. I appreciate you being here.